I mean, the reason that, that I left Image Control at the time was I was playing in a band with a friend and he was very, very keen for it to be a successful band. And I thought, like, I really can't, in all conscience, be with him and support him in, in the band if I'm not giving it my full attention. So I just couldn't continue working with Keith in that role. So basically left the company to join a band, which we, we you know, we played around the, the pubs and, and, and it went quite well, except it just never actually ended up in a record contract or whatever. So that... While we were still trying to make that work and it was getting pretty clear that it was never going to work, I got a phone call from a colleague um, who was working in Hollywood on a movie over there and I'd helped him develop some software called Flame and in as much, well, you know, played a fairly minor role in helping him you know, develop the, um, the user interface and I wrote the original manual for the software. So when his clients over there said, look, it, who, what's the user base for this software? Who knows how to use it? He said, oh, there's one guy in Melbourne that knows how to use it. So I... Within a week, I was in Hollywood, and I stayed there for three years, finished that film, got pulled onto a couple more films, ended up um, being quite successful there, and became extremely uh, homesick and realised that my heart obviously lies here in Melbourne, so came back here and have been working on feature films ever since. Well, I was very fortunate in arriving in the States to work on Super Mario Brothers. That was the, it had the most digitally composited shots of any movie at that time. It was uh, 150 shots, which was quite a lot. I mean, it, all films now, even even um, romantic comedies, have 150 visual effects shots these days. But in those days, that was quite outstanding. And fortunately, that year, we were one of the finalists in the Bake Off for the Academy Awards. So I got to go and stand up at the Academy and speak about the film. And that was really quite a buzz. And that's what kept me in Hollywood for years, thinking, oh, wow, that was pretty, that was pretty cool and fun. Um, and after that, worked on Batman Forever with John Dykstra, who's an extremely talented man. And... Um, Coneheads as well was another one I worked on over there and with some really talented digital matte painters or guys that were matte painters that became digital matte painters and I learned an awful lot from those people. And then when I was working on Batman Forever I got into the, into the lifts at Hollywood Digital and I was going down to the ground floor and, and I heard these Australian accents. I said, you guys wouldn't be Aussies, would you? And they're like, oh yeah, and it was, um, was uh, Jill Bilcock who was Baz's editor on Romeo and Juliet and a couple of the crew from there. And so I ended up meeting up with Baz over there and deciding that when the film came back to Australia, they were interested in me working on it back here. So when I came back to Australia, I ended up being the visual effects designer on Romeo and Juliet, which was probably you know, a career highlight for sure. And after that, worked on quite a few um, large in the Asian market type films, Seven Swords most recently. And I, was, I ended up over in the northern highlands of, um, of China, shooting that film for, for about seven weeks, then came back and finished it off here in Melbourne. And currently working on Baz Luhrmann's Australia. Yeah, in terms of recognition for visual effects um, practitioners, yeah, traditionally we get, we, we, we appear in the credits way after everyone's walked out of the cinema. And, and, and actually I remember laughing that um, my, my credit on Super Mario Brothers was after the chimp that, that um, played for about five seconds in the film. And I think, you know, actors have had representation, um, have had unions of representation in the film industry for a very long time, and obviously they get, very, they get their due credit pretty early in the film. But um, we are starting to get better representation now, and I know on, on Romeo and Juliet, Fox actually intervened and had my credit moved up to, to earlier in the film, in, in, the, in the credits, which was quite, quite a big deal at the time, was quite appreciative of that. But even now we tend to get kind of shuffled down past catering and, and, and such, but it's improving.